Are you ever confused by the names of piano chords? Well, if you are, you are not alone. You see, this is one of the most confusing topics for piano students, and so in today's quick tip, I wanna clear this up for you once and for all, and I'm gonna show you my definitive guide to piano chords so you finally understand how to name chords. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, we're gonna start with triads. These are very simple three note chords, and then we're gonna work our way to more complex chords with more notes. And before we get started, I do wanna mention that we are not going to cover every single conceivable chord, but we're gonna cover the most common chords and the ones that are the most important to know if you are playing the piano. So when it comes to triads, a triad is a three note chord, and triads come from the scale, all right? So the first thing is just play a C major scale. It's all white notes. And if you can play a C major scale, you're off to a great start because chords come from the major scale. So the first triad, we're gonna start on C. We skip the D, play the E, we skip the F, and we play the G. Okay, this is called a C major triad. And the way you build this chord is that you play every other note from the major scale. And you can do this on any scale. So if you wanted to try this on F, you skip every other note of the F major scale. Okay, so that's the first triad, your major triad. The second triad you need to know is called a minor triad. And for the minor triad, you lower the third note. So we go C, D, E, one, two, three, we lower that note, and there's our C minor triad, okay? Very simple. The third triad you need to know is called a diminished triad. And for the diminished triad, we're gonna lower that G, the fifth note from the scale, down a half step. Okay, so that's the C diminished triad. And then C augmented is like a C major, but you raise the fifth, the G, up a half step. Okay, so these are the four triads that you really need to know to get started with the piano. C major, C minor, C diminished, and C augmented, okay? And we notated these chords in the lesson sheet music here. C means C major, C with a little M means C minor, or you could have a little dash, that would also mean minor. C with the circle means C diminished, and then C with the plus means C augmented. Now if you wanna do a deep dive on triads, including exercises to master your triads in all keys, check out our triads course in the link below. Now sometimes you might come across a really big chord, like a C major, but it's not really obvious that it's a C major chord. And so there's a little trick that I like to use to figure out the name of the chord if I don't know the name. And so here's the trick. Let's say you had a big chord like this. The first thing is to remove any note doublings. So if you look at these notes, G, C, and E, well, I'm doubling these notes on the top, G, C, E, and G. So you wanna remove all of the doubled notes, and now I'm left with my three chord tones. The second part of the trick is to stack this chord in as many third intervals as possible. And if you look at this chord, you might notice that we have a fourth interval on the bottom, one, two, three, four, and then a third interval on the top, one, two, three. And so if we take that G off the bottom and we put it on the top, now we have two sets of third intervals, one, Two. And now it's very clear that this is a C major chord. All right, next we're gonna talk about sus chords, but before we do this, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. So when you're playing the piano or any instrument, you have two different sus chords that are very common. The first sus chord is called a C sus four. It's C, F, and G. Now the way to think of this chord is it's kind of like a C major, but what you're gonna do is take that middle note from the chord and raise it up a half step or suspend the chord. And so what this does is it creates a little bit of suspense or anticipation for the next chord. This oftentimes resolves down, this F resolving down to an E, okay? So a C sus four is like a C major, but you move the third up a half step. The other sus chord is called a C sus two, okay? For this sus chord, you can think of it like a C major chord, but we're gonna take that middle note and we're gonna go down a whole step and suspend the chord down to the second note of the scale. And once again, it's very common in music if you're playing a C sus two to grab that two 
and then resolve it up to the E or the third of the chord. All right, next we're gonna talk about add two chords. What is an add two chord? Okay, that is an add two chord. This is a C major chord, but we're adding the D to this chord. So instead of a sus chord where we're replacing the third with the second, that's a sus two, we're gonna add the two to the chord, and so you would call this an add two chord, or a C add two. Now I do wanna mention that these notes could be spread out. You're not always gonna see a C add two like this. For example, you could have the C like this, and then put your two there like that. And this would still be a C add two, because again, we define chords by stacked thirds. You could even spread the notes out even more. For example, you could play your C triad on the bottom and put your two on the top. Again, this is a C add two, because if you stack it primarily in thirds, you end up with the C triad and then the add two just below the third. Now, I wanna briefly discuss a few uncommon chords that you might see in music. The first one is called a C with a sharp four. Okay, this is just a C major chord, C, E, and G. And what we're doing is we're adding the raised four or the sharp four to this chord. Okay, and you might see this chord very occasionally in music. You could call this a C major sharp four or you could call it a C major sharp 11. We're gonna talk about ninth, 11, and 13 chords later. Uh, another chord you might see occasionally is a C flat five. Okay. This one is a little bit different than the one I just played. With the C flat five, we are actually lowering the fifth down a half step. So for this chord, we don't want the fifth in the chord, we wanna lower the fifth. Do you see the difference? So on the first chord, we're keeping the fifth in the chord, we're adding the sharp four. In the second chord, we are lowering the fifth down a half step, so there's no G in this chord. All right, here's another kind of weird chord that you could see in music. What's the name of this chord? Well, it's pretty clear that this is a C major chord, but we're adding this D flat to the chord. So what would you call this? Well, you could call this a C with a flat two. Okay, C major with a flat two. You could also call this a flat nine. And again, we're gonna talk about our chord extensions later, but if you've studied a little bit of jazz, you could call this C major with the flat nine. Now, what if you wanted to play a C major chord, but you only wanted to play the bottom two notes? What would you call this chord? Well, you could call it a C major chord, but if you wanna be really specific to remove the fifth, you would say C omit five, or remove five. Now here's another kind of weird chord. What the heck is this chord? Well, there's different ways to think of this chord, but it's kind of like a C major and a C minor at the same time, okay? Again, it's not a chord you'll see very often. If you wanted to define this chord, you could call it C minor major or C major minor. Again, not a very common chord. And then here's another really weird chord. Okay, super strange. What's the name of this chord? Well, I would start by looking at the outer notes of the chord, C and G, okay? Now these notes come from a C major or a C minor, so I would start by calling this C major, but there's a few changes to this chord. The first thing is that there is no E in the chord, okay? So we wanna omit the E. The second thing is that we're adding a D flat, which is the flat two, and then the F sharp, which is the sharp four. Okay, so you could define this chord as C major, flat two, sharp four, omit three. Okay, it's kind of a clunky chord, not a chord you'll see very often, but that's one way you could describe this chord. You could also call it C major, flat nine, sharp 11, omit three. All right, next we're gonna talk about seventh chords. These are very important chords to know if you wanna play jazz piano. So there are basically six seventh chords that you really need to know. The first chord is called C major seven. It's a really simple chord. And basically what we're doing here is we're playing a C major triad on the bottom, except we're adding the seventh note from the C major scale to this chord. Or you can think of it as another stacked third. So if we keep stacking thirds from the scale, we end up with a C major seven. By the way, the seventh 
for a major seven chord is always gonna be a half step below the root. Okay, just a little trick to remember this chord. All right, the second seventh chord is called a C7 or a C dominant seven chord. They mean the same thing. And a C dominant seven is a major triad. And we're gonna add the seventh, but instead of a normal seventh, we're gonna lower it a half step to a B flat. Okay, this is a dominant seven chord. And for a dominant seven chord, the seventh is always gonna be a whole step below the root. The third seventh chord is called a minor seven chord. And for this chord, you're gonna play a minor triad on the bottom. And for the seventh on a minor seven chord, you're gonna use that lowered seventh from the C major scale, okay? So it's a lot like a dominant seven, except you're gonna lower the third and this is a minor seven chord. Next chord is called a half diminished seven chord. This is C half diminished. And so for this chord, you could think of it like a C diminished on the bottom. And then for the seventh, we're gonna use the lowered seventh from the C major scale. Another way that you can think of this chord is that it's a lot like a C minor seventh, except you're gonna lower the fifth from this chord. And so a lot of jazz music will actually call this chord a C minor seven flat five. It means the same thing as a C half diminished chord. The next seventh chord you should know is what's called a C diminished seven or a C fully diminished seventh chord. And so for this chord, you can think of it as a diminished triad on the bottom. And then on the top, we're gonna play the A, which is the sixth note of the C major scale. Now a cool little trick to remembering your diminished seventh chords is that all of the intervals are minor third intervals. So that's a minor third, that's a minor third, and that's a minor third. So it's a symmetrical chord and this can help you easily remember the chord. The final seventh chord that you might see in jazz music is what's called a minor major seven chord which looks like this. And this chord is a C minor triad on the bottom, except on the top, we're adding the B natural, which comes from the major scale. So it's kind of like a C minor seven, which I taught you earlier, except instead of the B flat, we're gonna play the B natural, and it kind of has this kind of very haunting sound to it. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on seventh chords, including exercises to master them, plus how to use them in tunes, check out our level two foundations learning track, and I'll put a link to that below. All right, next you're gonna learn your chord extensions. This is where you can get some really cool colors in your chords, and so the first chord extension is called the ninth extension. So here's our first chord. This is called a C major nine, okay? And so what we're doing here is we're playing a C major seven that I taught you earlier, but we're adding one more stacked third to this chord. And remember the stacked thirds come from the major scale, okay? So up from this B, we go C, D. This is the ninth note from the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? Now you might be wondering, Johnny, why don't we call this a C major seven with an add two? And the reason we don't call this a two and instead call it a nine is because we're stacking thirds up to the nine meaning that this C major nine chord includes the seven, the five, the three, and the one. If I did not have the seventh in this chord and I played it like this, then that would be more appropriate to call it a C major add two. But if we put that seventh in the chord, that implies that we're stacking up to the ninth. And so very important to remember, a C major nine chord implies that you're including all of these lower stacked thirds in the chord. Now, you can omit notes from this chord or take out notes. It's not uncommon for musicians to remove the fifth from this chord, but you generally wanna have all of these notes present, the one, the three, the seven, and the nine in your ninth chords. All right, the second ninth chord is called a C9 or a C dominant nine, and it looks like this. Okay, it's very similar to the last chord, except on the bottom, we're playing a C7 or a C dominant seven, and then we're adding the nine on the top. 
okay? So this is called a C9 or a C dominant nine. And once again, when you're adding the nine to the chord, it implies that you're playing all of these chord tones below it, which are stacked thirds. Now, quick little trick to remembering the nine of your chord. The ninth is always going to be a whole step above the root of the chord, okay? That's really helpful for students. The third ninth chord you need to know is called a C minor nine. And basically, just like our last two chords, we're gonna leave that nine on the top, and then we're gonna play a C minor seven on the bottom. Okay, so once again, a C minor nine is a C minor seven, except we're stacking one more third on the top, and the C minor nine includes the one, three, five, and seven of your C minor seven chord. All right, next we're gonna talk about 11th chords, but before we do this, if you're enjoying this lesson and you wanna do a deep dive on chord extensions, you can in our chord extensions course. In this course, I show you my favorite voicings of extended chords, exercises to master these chords, and I show you how to use them in tune. So I'll put a link to that below. All right, so what is an 11th chord? Well, if you continue stacking thirds, up the C major scale, eventually you'll get to the F, which is the 11th note, starting from C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay? So if we stack all the way up a C major nine and we add the 11 to it, this is technically called a C major 11 chord. It's a major nine chord and we're adding the fourth note of the major scale or the 11th interval from the bottom to this chord. Now in practice, this is not a chord that you typically will use because of the dissonance between the F and the E, meaning that typically on a major seven chord or a major nine chord, we're not gonna add the 11 to it. If you wanted to add a really pretty color, you could add the sharp 11, that's a little more common, but in general, this is not a chord that you will actually use. All right, next chord is called a C dominant 11, which looks like this. It's a C seven chord. This is a C dominant seven. We're gonna add the nine to it and we're gonna add the 11 to it. And so the name of this chord is a C11 or C dominant 11 chord. And once again, it includes all of the thirds below it. Now, once again, like the major 11 chord, this is not a chord that you typically will use because of the dissonance between these two tones. Uh, it is a little more common to use the sharp 11 if you wanted to get a little more of an altered sound. Final 11th chord is called a C minor 11 looks like this, okay? It's a C minor seven, and we're adding the ninth and the 11th to this chord. Again, it's the same nine and 11 as the other chords, except we are changing the bass seventh chord on the bottom. This is a minor seventh chord, okay? Now this is a chord that you will use in jazz or any kind of style of music. It's a really, really lovely way of playing a minor seven chord. All right, next we're gonna talk about our final extension called the 13 extension. And so if we continue stacking thirds from the 11, we end up with an A. And this is a 13th interval. If you count all the notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is why we call it a 13 because we're stacking thirds all the way up to that A. And by the way, if you wanted to stack another third, you actually end up on the C, which is your starting note. So you can only have up to three chord extensions, the nine, the 11, and the 13. Now I wanna point out something really cool about 13 chords. If you look at the nine and 11 and 13, these are actually the missing notes from the C major scale. Meaning if I played the C major scale here, I'm missing my D, F, and A or my two, four, and six, okay? So that's a really helpful way to remember your 13 chords is basically it's your two, four, and six, or the missing notes from the C major scale. Now this chord that I'm playing here is called a C major 13. Okay, it's a C major seven, it has the nine, and the 11, and the 13 in it. However, most professional musicians will not play the F and the E together because of the dissonance. So if you wanna play a major 13 chord, it's very common to omit the F from this chord, and the chord will sound a lot better. And by the way, you can voice this chord in a variety of ways. 
know, that's a really beautiful way of playing a C major 13. So once again, you do not have to stack all the notes like this. You can change the order of the notes, which we call the chord voicing, to make it sound more beautiful. All right, our next 13 chord is called a C dominant 13, or a C 13. And for this chord, we're playing a C dominant 7 on the bottom, and we add our 9, 11, and 13 on the top. Okay, so once again, all these chords are very similar. What's changing are these bottom notes here to make it a dominant seven chord. Now, just as we said with the previous chord, you typically will not play the F and the E together because of the dissonance. And so jazz musicians will often leave out that F and they'll play the chord like this. Or you could put a sharp F there or what we call a sharp 11 for a little bit more of a colorful sounding chord. A lot of jazz musicians will play a C13 like that, where they kind of cluster the notes together. This is called a B voicing on this chord, by the way, or you could play it like that, okay? This is called an A voicing. So it's very common for these voicings to also remove the G from the chord, and you're left with the third, the seventh, the ninth, and the 13th. All right, the final 13th voicing is called a C minor 13. And once again for this, we're gonna keep our chord extensions on the top and on the bottom, we're gonna change it to a C minor seven, okay? So once again, a minor 13 chord implies that we're including all of these stacked thirds below the 13. And the nice thing with a minor 13 chord is that you can actually keep all of these notes present in the chord. For example, I could voice this chord like that, and it has a really cool kind of jazzy sound to it. All right, the final type of chord you should know are what are called altered chords. And altered chords have a very cool jazzy sound. And these can really color your chord in some interesting ways. So what is an altered chord? Well, typically altered chords are when you take a seventh chord, like a C7, and instead of adding the nine or the 11 or the 13 to this chord, you alter these chord extensions. And there are only four altered notes that you can use over chords like this. Your first altered note, or what I call an alteration, is your flat nine. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that D and lower it down a half step, and now we have what's called a C7 with a flat nine, okay? And this gives our C7 a really cool sound if you're playing a chord progression like a C7 going to an F. The second chord alteration is called a sharp nine, and so in this case, we'll take the D, we'll raise it up to a D sharp or an E flat, and we get this kind of crunchy sound on our C7. A okay, really, really nice way to kind of color a dominant seven chord. The third alteration is when we take our 11 and we raise it up to a sharp 11. Okay, really cool note. A lot of jazz musicians will call this a flat five. One, two, three, four, five. So you'll oftentimes see this called C7 with a flat five. I like to call it C7 with a sharp 11 because that implies that we are keeping that seventh chord on the bottom. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on altered chords, you can in our chord alterations course. In this course, I teach you how to voice your altered chords, how to practice them with exercises, and how to use them in tunes. So I'll put a link to that below as well. The last alteration that you should know is called a C7 with a flat 13. And this is when we take our 13th extension and we lower it a half step to A flat, okay? Now a lot of jazz musicians will call this a sharp five because you're raising the fifth up to the G sharp, but I like to call it a flat 13 once again because this implies that we're stacking thirds up to that flat 13. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.